three main problems in the field of HIV medicines. One, there's no effective vaccine. Uh, in over 25 years, no one's been able to develop a vaccine against this pandemic. The numbers in the millions now infected continue to rise, and prevention efforts seem to have kind of fallen flat. The second problem, patients develop, eventually develop resistance to conventional drugs. The third problem is over 60% of HIV-positive populations in the third world don't have access to drugs. This means that people have to wait until they're truly sick to receive medical attention, and a lot of areas in southern Africa People in my age range, 25 to 35, over 35% of them are HIV positive and unable to have access to medication. I will argue tonight, as one of my colleagues, that Advance show potential to combat each of these areas. We're already off to a great start. Before the evening even started, thanks to the generosity of Arizona Ice Tea and Jetflix, we've raised over $25,000. That said, I'd like to introduce Dr. Cedar Paul, the inventor of Advance technology and e-vaccine. The virus, it uh, lives inside cells. So it attaches to our cells, host cells, gets into the cells, and that's the only way it can live. It cannot reproduce, it cannot propagate outside the cells. And the virus mutates at a very rapid rate. It's, it's one of the most difficult, well, the most difficult virus that we have faced in as much as it has spread to 37 million people now uh, across the world and it mutates constantly. So uh, our contribution uh, initially was that we discovered a constant part of the virus. Um, we, uh, we have called it the Achilles heel, uh, in as much as it's first important to figure out what is the weakness of the virus. And, and the reason it's constant, it does not mutate, is that the virus attaches to cells using this little bitty portion of itself. And then uh, the virus uses another trick. It suppresses the immune response. Our immune system is the one that we, that we use to protect ourselves against all foreign microbials, so microbes, bacteria, viruses, and so forth. And this virus has learned how to suppress the immune system. Uh, th that was uh, one of the milestones along the pathway of the basic science that we've done. And then thereafter, we've, we said that uh, if the natural immune system is incapable of making the protective antibodies, what can we do to engineer uh, a response, a protective response? And the breakthrough came with this uh, covalent, this electron to electron sharing in a very tight sort of binding. So it's a chemically engineered vaccine candidate that we have developed that uh, instead of suppressing the immune system, actually activates the immune system. So we have found a way around, um, uh, around the, the, the clever tricks that HIV uses to, to suppress our immune system. And in, in, uh, in small animals, uh, this has uh, worked out. We have made abzines, these catalytic antibodies that go on, on and on, like energizer bunnies, if you will. <laughs> They really don't stop. Normal antibodies simply bind on a one-to-one -one basis and that's it. Now having said all this, this is uh, the basic science and, and uh, the job now is to translate uh, this uh, basic science, these innovative ideas that uh, are really quite new for, for my peers, my other scientists. So we have to convince the world that uh, this is a valid way that we are able to break through this chink in the armor of HIV. And that is what I, I not only do I thank you, I admire you, Zachary, and the others who are here in this room for the support that you're giving us. This is uh, critical, the support, the public, private uh, support is critical. We've been funded by the National Institutes, by the government, by the National Institutes of Health. We've received lots of money for the basic science. But when it comes time to deliver the, the innovative ideas to patients, we are dependent on the private sector, really, and uh, uh, public interest groups such as uh, ARF. Thank you again for your support.